There are four marketing mistakes that health coaches are making every single day. And it's the reason why 90% of them are failing in business. Let me tell you what they are. Hey guys, what's going on? Uriel came here from Healthpreneur. Uh, we help health practitioners and coaches get clients and scale their practices online. And in this no BS, no fluff video, I wanna tell you the truth, the truth that you may not wanna hear, but the truth that you need to hear because that is my job as a coach is to challenge you. It's to help you get to where you can't get to on your own. And sometimes that means hearing the things you don't necessarily wanna hear, um, but you need to, okay? So let's talk about marketing mistakes. Um, there are a lot of health coaches, and I don't know if you know this, that the average salary of a health coach is just over $37,000 a year. Now, if you live in the States or Canada, that's very, uh, that's not a lot of money to live on, okay? However, the opportunity for health coaches into the future is just immense. Everyone's talking about how health coaching is, is, is the biggest opportunity, and it is, it's huge. But here's the number one out of the four, one of the marketing mistakes that health coaches are making, and it is this. They treat their business like a side hustle or a hobby. Now, I understand a lot of health coaches come to us for help with their marketing to get clients, and a lot of them are already working in another job, or you know, they're, they have a health coaching business, but they're making a couple hundred bucks a month. You know, It's nothing crazy. And I think part of the issue is that when you treat the business like a side hustle, like a hobby, you put in hobby-like effort and you get hobby-like results. It's very tough to build a seven-figure business if it's a side hustle. Now, I'm not saying that's the type of business you wanna build. You know, maybe you, maybe you wanna build a business that's just a couple grand a month. If that's you, you can probably just stop watching this video because quite honestly, I'm not here to help people earn a little bit of money. I'm here to help people build legacy-like businesses. And if that's you, keep watching. If it's not, you can just watch something else. So what do you do if you're making the transition, right? So if you are working in a corporate job or another clinic or for whatever, you know, and right now you're just starting to build up your clientele and it's not quite there. Well, the number one thing is that understanding that like most people start where you are, right? That's how I started in 2006. I was training clients um, as a trainer and obviously seeing them as a nutritionist at the same time. But I was working one-on-one -on -one, like 12, 14 hours a day. And I was like, this is insane. I was doing that for seven years. And then 2006, I started a business online and there was a moment where I said, um, dude, like where, how do I find time here? How do I find time to to do this. And you, the thing is you can't find time. You have to make time. So the commitment that I made was one hour a day, I was going to build my, I was going to build my future. I was going to build my dream business. And at the time, I don't even know what I was doing. I, I think I may have been building up my first program, which was a online fitness program, but it started off with a, a commitment to, to making time, not finding making time every single day that initially started as a side hustle. But here's the difference is the vision. It's the vision. That's the difference that turns, you know, something you're doing a little bit on the side into a serious business. I had never, ever, ever uttered the words, I just want to make a couple grand a month. No, no, like from day zero, it was, I'm going to build a multiple eight figure empire. That was my vision even before I started my business. And because of that vision, there was so much tension from where I was to where I wanted to go. And that tension creates energy. And that's what pulled me forward. It's like an elastic band. If you pull an elastic band, what's gonna happen? If you let it go, it's just gonna snap. So the more you pull, the more tension there is, the more tension drives you forward to your dream future. That's what happened in my case. That's what happens in a lot of people's cases that have big dreams, big ambitions for what they wanna do. But there's a lot of health coaches that they're like, yeah, just want to make, you know, cover the bills. And there's very little tension there. So there's a little bit of stretch on the elastic bands and there's not a lot of juice behind that. There's no energy. 
right? And so little passion, little intention, little energy, little action, little results. So I think that's the first mistake. And that's not even a marketing mistake. That's just a mindset mistake, I think, with approaching the business. It's thinking too small. It's thinking like it's a side hustle and, and not taking the, uh, the prospect of building a great business like really seriously. So from that flows the next couple issues, okay? So the second thing, and I think this flows beautifully, not well, not beautifully, it flows from the first thing is that a lot of health coaches do not invest in their business. This is catastrophically bad. So you'll spend five, eight, ten thousand dollars to get certified as a health coach. And then what? Like you have no marketing skills, no business acumen to build a business. That's insane. It doesn't make sense. Now I understand there's fear. Right? I've already invested this amount of money. What if I invest this amount of money and it doesn't work? All that kind of stuff. I get it. I get it. But listen, nothing ventured, nothing gained. And the difference between those who succeed in business and quite honestly in life is that they don't look at, they don't ask themselves or they don't think like, what is this going to cost me if it doesn't work out? That's not the question they focus on. The question they focus on is what is it going to cost me if I don't do this? Because if you want to build a better future, you have to be sick and tired of your current situation. And don't sugarcoat your current situation. If it's okay, you're never going to change. You have to get really uncomfortable to make a change. Because change is hard. Change is painful. And I was talking with my clients this morning. If you are speaking with the prospects and they're telling you that it's too expensive for them to work with you, here's what's happening. Let's say you're charging $2,000 for uh, some type of transformation. And they're, so $2,000 is here and they're saying it's too expensive. And what that means is their current situation, the problem of the current situation or the desired outcome that they want in their head is down here, a $200 ambition or situation. And that's never gonna happen. You're never gonna get someone to say, yeah, $2,000 is a steal when they think their problem is 200 bucks. But if that person comes into the conversation and they feel, or with your help, see that their current situation is a $2 million problem in terms of what it's costing them, all of a sudden $2,000 to work with you is a steal. And so it's the same thing here is that you need to be dissatisfied while being grateful. I know it sounds weird. Appreciate what you have. Absolutely, right? Absolutely appreciate and be grateful for what you have. But you also have to be very unsatisfied. And I know that sounds weird energetically, right? But it, it, it's tough to create, like human beings, the way we operate is we are motivated by pain very, uh, very powerfully. And so a lot of times we don't, we don't look to get in shape until we're massively overweight, right? Something bad has to happen before we take action. You know this if you're a health coach, right? So you have to be you have to get uncomfortable with your current situation. You cannot sugarcoat it. If you're making a couple grand a month, as a business owner, that you have you have to be absolutely disgusted with that. Like disgusted is probably a good word because that's there's a lot of there's a lot of charge there. And you might be saying you're you're crazy. This is nonsense. Maybe, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if there's not enough pain of your current situation, you will not change or improve it. I promise you that. I promise you. I've, I've done this for a very long time, 20 years, and we've helped thousands and thousands and thousands of coaches and practitioners. And those who say they want something but don't do it. Two things are happening. Number one, stop saying you want this thing if you're not willing to do it, right? That's, that's, that's the only thing that's happening, right? There's not two things. That's the only thing that's happening. So please appreciate what you have, but never be satisfied. And I know it's a kind of a weird, you know, energetic juxtaposition to juggle there. So that's the second thing is, is not willing to invest in your business. And if you invest in your business, that's, and I'm, and I'm talking about all aspects of the business. I'm talking about investing in hiring a coach, joining a mastermind, investing in advertising, not playing the, the mini mouse leagues of, I'm gonna post Instagram real videos. Deet, 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 deet. Like seriously, what kind of a business is that? It's ridiculous. And what happens if you take a week off and you're not posting the deet, 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 deet videos? Nothing happens in your business, and that's because it's not a business, it's a side hustle, it's a job. It's something that requires your time and effort and energy. There's no systems, there's no assets, there's, there's none of that stuff. 
please treat your business like a business. A business is a conglomeration of systems that produces a profit for the owner independent of the owner's input. Think about that, rewind this video, listen to that again, okay? What I'll add to that is in the service of others, okay? That's what we're here to do. We're here to help other people improve and transform their lives, never lose sight of that. So you should make a ton of money. You should make a ton of money, but it's not at the expense of others. It's in the service of others. Never lose sight of that. So that's the second thing. You have to be willing to invest in your business because if you don't, well, it's just going to be a very, very, very slow, long journey. And I've been there and I was, I was stupid for three years when I started. Did everything by myself. Didn't want to invest in my business. I was making poverty line income. And it was just interesting thinking that I'm like, you know, I'm going to do all this stuff. Then I'll have the money. And then I can invest in my business. It never happens like that. Because here's what happened. In 2010, I hired my first coach. And it was, for me, a lot of money at the time, more money than I made in my previous year in business. But guess what happened? I invested that amount and my business went from this to this. It was a hockey stick inflection point. You see, when you invest, you pay more attention. You're fully in, there's no more Mickey Mouse. And as a result of that, you get bigger results and it pays for the investment in, in so many ways and in so many times. So be willing to invest in yourself and your business. That is the number one thing you can do in your life is invest in yourself and invest in your business. Third mistake health coaches are making from a marketing perspective specifically is trying to help everyone. Big no-no. If you try to help everyone, you end up helping no one because fundamentally your marketing cannot be laser focused enough for anyone to pay attention to it. Does a specialist make more money than a generalist? You better believe it. Why? Because everyone wants to work with the best in one specific area. Did you want to go to the restaurant that has the quote unquote best Mexican, Japanese, Italian, Brazilian steakhouse food altogether? No, like how can you be the best at all of that stuff? You want to go to the best Japanese restaurant, period. If you want French food, you go to the best French restaurant. No one's typing in mediocre French restaurant, Toronto. No, everyone's typing in best French restaurant, Toronto. You've done it, I've done it, we all do it. So if you want to attract the best clients, if you wanna build a great business, you have to be the best. And that's, that's a relentless pursuit of excellence, not perfection, of excellence. It's you constantly upping your skills. It doesn't mean continually getting certifications and playing that game forever. Um, it's about you getting better and better and better at helping your clients, at getting better with your business, at getting better at marketing, getting better with your messaging, at understanding that you need to specialize and become the expert at, you know, thyro um, hypothyroid hypothyroidism. I can't even speak, or in my case, alopecia, or uh, you know, gut health, leaky gut, you know, osteoporosis, whatever the condition is. You become the expert in that. But here's why a lot of them. Here's why a lot of health coaches don't do this. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to alienate a lot of people. Yeah, well, what was the game plan? You're going to help everyone in the first place? You think you're going to help 300 million people in the US? No way, never in your life, not even in a thousand lifetimes. Get over it. You're not going to help everyone and you never would. So why not take a small piece of the pie, which still is bigger than you're ever going to be able to serve and become the expert in that area? Brain surgeon makes what, 10 times more than a general practitioner? Why not be the brain surgeon of your niche? So when you, when you narrow down your single target market, that's fundamentally the number one thing you have to do in marketing. What that allows you to do is then it allows your, your messaging to be laser focused on those individuals. And now they see you as someone who understands what they're going through. And naturally they're gonna see you as the best possible solution for their problem. One of the reasons that so many of your colleagues work with us at Health Runner is because we only work with health practitioners and coaches. No one else. I've had people in like real estate, all sorts of other industries ask me for like, hey, can, like, can I get your coaching? And I'm like, no, I don't wanna coach you. Sorry, I only serve health professionals because that's my jam, I, that's, that's who I am. I'm my core, that's who I wanna serve, that's our mission. And that's a major advantage because we have hundreds of clients who are able to support each other and collaborate, and we understand health better than anyone on the planet. And that reflects in how we can serve our clients with the marketing and the messaging and all that kind of support. 
And it's the same thing with you. If you are the best at adrenal fatigue, you become the number one person for adrenal fatigue. Guess what? There's probably also 200 other people who specialize in adrenal fatigue, but that's fine. There is more than enough for everyone. And even if everyone had the same protocols you did, guess what? You are you. There's only one you. As long as you show up authentically and be your true self, you will attract the right people to you and repel everyone else. And that's why there's always gonna be more than enough for everybody. The fourth marketing mistake that health coaches are making that's costing them their business is they don't have a business model. They don't have a business model. So if you were to draft up a business plan and take it to the bank or go on Shark Tank or Dragon's Den here in Canada and ask for an investment, which I strongly recommend you do not do because you don't have a sellable asset in your business because your business is you. It's not a sellable business necessarily. So please don't get outside investment. It's a ridiculous, dumb decision. I'll save that for another day. But let's say you were to do that and you put together a business plan and your business plan was, uh, you know, here's how we're going to market, here's how we're going to acquire clients, blah, blah, blah. What is your business model? How are you going to tell potential investors what your plan is to grow the business? So let me give an example of what a lot of business plans look like in the health coaching space. Cool. So thank you for inquiring about working with us. Uh, tell me a little bit about your business. How do you currently get clients? This would be like me asking a prospective client, a health coach or a practitioner. Well, um, like, I don't know. We get, you know, I get word of mouth. People talk about me. Awesome. And obviously that's not working because if it was, we, we wouldn't be having this conversation. So can you imagine going to the bank, seeking an investment or an investor, and, they're, and you're proposing that your business plan is to hopefully get some word of mouth, but you're like, no, 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 like, but I'm really good. People talk about me all the time. Great. Then why are you seeking outside investments? Because your business, if it was good enough, would pay for itself with net free, with net free cash flow. Okay. So your business model is just in case you're not sure what this is, is how you attract convert and deliver to your clients. Okay. So it's how you attract and convert clients and how you deliver results to them. If you do not have a clear, succinct, easy to describe methodology for that keyword is methodology, then you don't have a business model. Um, posting these types of videos on Instagram and like taking cute pictures of yourself, that might be a business model. Um, I think it's a pretty bad one to be honest with you because Everything relies on you. It is your manual effort, and it's not something you can duplicate. It's not something you can clone. It's not something you can scale necessarily. Again, as I mentioned earlier, the purpose of business or a business is a conglomeration or a, a group of systems or a system that produces a profit for the owner in the service of other people. In our world, that's called a perfect client pipeline. Every single one of our clients runs the same business model. It's four steps and four steps only. We don't do anything else until they're at $1 million, $1 million in revenue. And part of my job as their coach is to tell, uh, like, no, you're not going to do that free challenge. No, no, no. Like that's, it's adding complexity. It's, a, it's, it's, it's scattering your focus. I know you saw an ad on Facebook about someone else's cool thing. Put the blinders on. And this is where most people go wrong is they, they don't know what they stand for. So they fall for everything. If you don't have a clear defined business model, you don't have a business. Okay. And I know this is this, I mean, you might be like, dude, I don't like you, man. I don't like the truth that is, I don't like the stuff that's coming out of your mouth. This is very much in my face. Good. Okay. Good. Because here's something else that might rub you the wrong way. If you don't build a great business, that is selfish. If you play small and you just want to help a couple people, that is selfish because you have magic and expertise that can make a profound difference in a lot of people's lives. But you might say, Yuri, I don't want to build a huge business. I don't want to talk to thousands or whatever number of people. Great. I asked you to stop watching earlier if that was the case. But if you're still watching and you do want to build something great, it's selfish to play small. Again, like you don't have to impact millions of people, but I'm saying you can impact people at scale in terms of 
um, magnitude or depth. The beautiful thing about coaching, the thing I love about coaching is that it's such a transformational experience for the people you serve, which is why you can charge more. You're not selling an ebook for 20 bucks. You're selling a coaching program for two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 that fundamentally shifts someone's life in a massive way. And it's your duty to help as many people as you possibly can. That is the, the unwritten oath you took when you came into this planet or onto this, into this line of work because you are here to serve, you're here to heal, you're here to teach, you're here to coach, and to play small because of fear or whatever else is selfish. You gotta get out of your own way. You have to, okay? I promise you. Anyways, there you go. Okay, so those are four marketing mistakes I see health coaches make. Just a recap, number one is treating the business like a side hustle or a hobby. No good, no bueno. Number two is not being willing, not even not able, but willing, not willing to invest in your business or yourself. Number three is trying to help everyone. You never will, you never should. Single target market. And number four is not having a concise, easy to explain, repeatable business model. Because doing a bunch of stuff isn't a business model. Those are the four marketing mistakes that you know, I think it's costing a lot of people their businesses. So anyways, if you've enjoyed this, we have some other amazing videos. If you're watching this and you're a health coach and you wanna get more clients, please watch the next video in this series. I'm gonna show you exactly how to get clients, mistakes to avoid, and just keep watching. Just keep watching our other videos. Just spend the next couple hours here on YouTube and just keep watching. Just watch, 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 consume. Don't worry about anyone else's stuff. Just watch this. If this has resonated with you and you're like, man, this guy is a good looking dude Thank you. And he's got some really great stuff to say. I'm going to continue watching. Please do, because I've got hundreds of videos here. And if you just spent the next day watching this content, it's going to fundamentally transform your business. And if you want to take the next steps with us, you can watch our Perfect Client Pipeline training, which is linked up somewhere in the description below. And uh, we can always book a call to speak with one another. So that's all for today. Remember to subscribe to the channel, watch the next video, and I'll see you there.